strap, earthquake strap, that's only for the water tank. But the tankless doesn't need a strap. <clears throat> so one, state law, the California law requires that all new and replacement water heater exist residential water heater to be braced, anchor, and strap resist falling or horizontal displacement due to earthquake motion. Water heater means the standard water heater with the capacity no more than 120 gallons. So this is what it clearly stated. It's a water heater with the tank. Okay, so the so it's a standard water heater. The one we talk about, the tankless, I guess it's not standard. <laughs> but this is a standard water heater and with a capacity no more than 120 gallons for which a pre-engineer strap kit is ready to available. Although that specifically state and statute <clears throat> require the statement of the compliance does not appeal, uh, appear to apply to the property install and bolted tankless water heater for the following reason. So the tankless is not, okay? And there's no tank that can overturn. Pre-engineer strap kits for such device are not readily available and boiling already exists that will help avoid displacement and breakage in the event of earthquake. The proper way to reach, uh, strap the uh, water heater is like the, uh, the belt. You go wrap around 360 degree and anchor at the uh, on the wall. Unless if you just, you know, if you just go around strap on the wall and you gotta have, oops, you gotta have the, uh, uh, the uh, the stud, the wood stud against the, the wall. So make sure, doesn't matter which direction, the water heater will not move. So when you strap it, not just fall in the front and also on the back or side. <clears throat> water, actually, when the water pipe, it breaks, no big deal. It's a gas pipe. When the gas pipe breaks, it leaking gas and may cause fire. Two, local requirements. Some local ordinance impose more uh, string, <clears throat> string than water heaters, brace, anchor, and strap required than does California at all. Therefore, it is important to check with the local city, county, building, and safety department regarding the applicable water heater, bracing, anchor, and strapping required for your property. So depending on how big is your water tank, it's not always two strap. Some of them, 70 gallon or even 100 gallon, they may require three strap. So that's why, you know, the bigger you get, you got to have more strap you get. <clears throat> so it depends, you know, sometimes they do have a local law. City, city law over, uh, supersede the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the county law. County law supersede the state law. State law supersede the federal law. So that's why we can plant the marijuana here, but federal law is not. <laughs> that's a state law. <laughs> but if the city say no, then no. They supersede the state law. Then <clears throat> what else, you know, supersede the, the city law? What's are even smaller than city? No, county's bigger. Yeah, HOA. <laughs> Community, HOA. They will supersede the city law. <clears throat> Just like uh, in Irvine, the city law say you can place the open house sign a certain size, certain height. But HOA, they have a different law. Well, then. Even tighter, I said, uh, but city law, I mean, they don't care. This is HOA. -H -H you want to list it, the house, you follow our rule, not city rule. So if you go through like Orange County, huh, especially have HOA, you better ask HOA. You know, have seller, ask what you got. You, you get the, uh, the phone number from seller, you call HOA directly. What's the, your sign rule, like open house sign, for sale sign, like, you know, usually with a house, we could put this high, but you go to Orange County, 
Why? It's only four feet. They're all midget. <laughs> they don't have eight feet tall. They can only get four feet. Just like, for example, did you notice that? Uh, <clears throat> used to be, I come from the, you know, the uh, auto dealer system, auto dealership. Sometimes when we're paging someone, we have a PA system, right? Irvine City, when I, I knew that, when Irvine Auto Center, they cannot have PA system. That's a city rule. It's a noise. <laughs> you cannot paging someone and just by use a PA system. No. <clears throat> so that's why, you know, every city have a city rule. Three, transfer written statement, California Health and Safety Code. Require the uh, seller any real uh, property con mm, containing a water heater to clarify in written that the uh, seller is compliance with California state law. If the property is manufactured or mobile home, seller shall also file a required state with the Department of Housing and Community Development. So when it's a mobile home, they have more uh, the... Uh, <coughs> For the uh, more requirement, so you need to file one more. But usually, if that's a case, uh, if anything you don't quite understand, you can also ask the uh, uh, escrow officer, because the uh, uh, escrow officer they will help you uh, to do the uh, if any requirement. That's why it's not every escrow they know how to do the mobile home or manufactured home. Just like if you have a business. Uh, Transaction, like you're selling the business, not every escrow officer know how to do it. So do commercial property. Some of the uh, uh, escrow officer only know residential only. That's it. Yeah. So those are the special situation you gotta have to understand and see. You know, um, if any escrow officer they would know how to do it, because we rely on them to do the smooth transaction. If we have any question, so we can consult with them. <clears throat> okay, and four certification seller represent that your property as a close of escrow will be compliance with the health and safety code by having a water heater brace anchor and strap in place in accordance with those requirements. But I mean, when you do the general inspection and the inspector will tell you what's the proper way to strap the, uh, uh, the water heater. So you don't have to worry about that. <clears throat> but sometimes, you know, it's good to know, you know, and that make you different than other agents. State law, California law required that every single family drilling and factory built house housing unit sold um, after the January 1st, 1986. This law has been long, long time. Must have an operable small detector approved and listed by the state fire marshal instead of in accordance with the state fire marshal regulation. And two, all use Manufacturer and mobile home have an operable, uh, operable small detector in each sleeping room. So basically what we need is before 1986, they usually just leave it a hallway. If you look at an older house, they only have hallway, have a small detector. Now they need every sleeping room. Okay. I know I have a seller even want a challenge. Show me which law. Where? Well, you, you go, you, you show them a, a California health and safety code. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes you show them a form. Well, this is the form for you guys to sign. I don't believe it. Oh, uh, then <laughs> I'll show you the safety code. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> it's not big deal. It's not like a huge expense. Probably cost 10, 15 bucks each small detector. And you argue as a, why should I have to install in every bedroom? Well. If you do, you know, if you don't want to argue with a seller, that's fine. You buy it, install it. Or sometimes we, you will buy it, we leave it on the kitchen counter. <laughs> buy it, you install it yourself. <laughs> <clears throat> Suppose you should install it for them. 
but I mean, at least, you know, I provide it. And when you do the remodeling or painting, yeah, a painter or somebody installed it. It's all battery operated. It's easy. And now they do have like those are 10 years warranty one, uh, small detector. So including a battery. So every 10 years, you replace a small detector and battery, whole thing, every 10 years. One time, yeah. Those are like disposable small detector every 10 years. The figure, you know, did you know some of a small detector? I look at it, boy, that's antique. 40 years old, <laughs> or oh, 50 years old. Oh, wow, that's pretty big one. You know? <laughs> <clears throat> I love to see those antique stuff. No, guess you know those are from the you know when this when you stay in the United States longer, you'll love those antique. You know when you're just fresh on the boat, you know I say, uh, oh, old stuff, old house. Uh, you know, you don't appreciate, you know, those are antique, you know, the older house, you know, especially over 100 years old house. Yeah. <clears throat> I always imagine if I can own those house, I can maybe find some treasure, you know, <laughs> in the attic, <laughs> in the basement. <clears throat> okay, and the... Uh, um, so the local requirements, some local ordinance impose more uh, stringent, um, small detector requirement uh, than the, those California law. Therefore, it is important to check with the local city and county building and safety department regarding the applicable small detector requirement for your property. Three, California Health and uh, Safety Code require every transfer of any real property, okay, uh, contain a single drilling, single family drilling, whether the uh, transfer is made by sale, exchange, or real property sales contract, installment sales contract, to deliver to a transferee a written statement indicate that the uh, transferer is in compliance with the California state law, compliance with small detector. If the property is manufacturer or mobile home, seller should also file a required statement with the Department of Housing and Community Development. HCD, that's a different department. Four, exception. Generally, a written statement of small detector compliance is not required for a transaction for which is a seller exempt from providing a transfer disclosure statement. Sometimes, you know, on this one, we don't really use it anymore uh, when doing the purchase. Why? Because the, uh, our TDS already, you know, put it in on the bottom of a first page. Transfer disclosure statement. Here they put it. But why are we still using this form? That's only for the lease now. Because on the lease agreement, <laughs> lease agreement doesn't you know show anything here. And we don't have many disclosure. So that's why we're still using this. Make sure landlord and tenant understand. Because I know some of a landlord they did not install the small detector in the bedroom. That's a that's what I heard. The true thing, true story is um, fire breakout. And later on, when the insurance company, they come on the company and say everything. And you know what? Tenant also sue landlord. Why? You, because you deny your daughter's small detector in the bedroom and cause us more damage. The good thing is, doesn't really have any life threat, but it's a personal property. <clears throat> Then the insurance company, they do the you know, investigation and found out it is no small detector in the bedroom. So instead of tenants, insurance company compensate, the tenant is actually landlords. And landlords, insurance company and landlord have to compensate tenant because no small detector in the bedroom. 10, 15 bucks stuff and cost how much you got it for the damage. <clears throat> That's an old one, anything before 1986, but not anymore. You gotta have every bedroom with a small detector, sleeping. That's why the main thing is a sleeping room. So you don't need to install a bonus room. Then those you don't have to install at all. Whole office, mainly what to consider what is called a sleeping room. It has to be well, I'll put it this way, but if somebody want to sleep in the den, <laughs> are you going to install it or not? Uh, I would. 
even uh, Dan doesn't have a closet. It's not supposed to consider as a bedroom. But if someone sleeping there, you put the bed, and I would just, just cheap, just put it behind the door, you know, when you get in, okay, on top of a ceiling, okay? Not put all the way inside a, the, the bedroom. Like this is a bedroom and that's a door where we should, where we should install the uh, smoke detector. Over there on the ceiling, just when you get in, You'll see the smoke detector right away because the smoke is lighter than air. So they will penetrate from top first. So that's why, you know, did you ever see the education? If the fire break out, what do you do? You crawl on the bottom. You don't walk, you crawl. Why? You have still have air here, but you may not have the oxygen here, but you may still have oxygen. Here. So you crawl, get out because the fire always go on the top. And so do the smoke on the top. So that's why the, uh, when the smoke coming in through the uh, the gap of the uh, door, and they will trigger right away. But you put all the way in. Oh, come on. You already suffocated. You know, while you're sleeping. <clears throat> and that's why carbon monoxide detector, you put on the hallway, they will trigger first. If, you know, fire break out, definitely have a carbon monoxide as well. Okay? But they... Uh, or, you know, if the uh, gas happened, they're in the hallway, but you may not hear it. But so far, we don't require the law to install the carbon monoxide detector inside a bedroom <laughs> yet. I don't know, okay? Who knows when they may. I know, but still it's the uh, hallway. They didn't require to install inside a bedroom, only small detector, every sleeping bedroom. So the carbon monoxide detector only install each level in front of uh, uh, the bedroom hallway. That's it. So if you got two level, all you need is two. One, if you get downstairs, it doesn't matter you have a bedroom or not, you install maybe on the staircase or hallway. Up Upstairs, definitely, you gotta have to install it all the way in the front of a bedroom, the hallway. That's a carbon monoxide detector. But small detector, not just the hallway and each bedroom as well. But downstairs, if you don't have a bedroom, you don't need to install it, technically. Because that's all they care is a sleeping room and the hallway. <clears throat> um, five, certification. Seller represent that the property as a close of escrow will be compliant with the law by having uh, operable small detectors, one approved and listed on state fire marshal installed in accordance with the uh, state fire marshal required health and safety code. Two, in compliance with the Manufacturer Housing Construction and Safety Act, uh, located in each sleeping room for use manufacturer or mobile home as required by HCD. And three, in accordance with the applicable local ordinance. So those are, you know, I will have the uh, tenant sign it. Why? If, I mean, when I sign this one, I mean tenant agree and they be admitted all the bedroom compliance. But if the tenant remove the small detector themselves and fire breakout, not my issue. You sign it, you acknowledge, I did give it to you and I installed. But tenant, you're gonna have to replace the battery, not landlord. <clears throat> so you gotta, so I already, you know, uh, when you move in, everything is in order. And if you remove it yourself, then don't complain. That's why we sign a disclosure, just protect what? Landlord. Okay, the more disclosure you sign, basically is protecting landlord. Do you think protecting tenant? Uh, some of them, you know, I'll, I'll show you. But mainly this, you know, all protecting landlord. So a carbon monoxide detector, water heater strap, and smoke detectors. There? Okay. We'll continue. Uh, Mimo, I live in, you know, for the, uh, the last. Moving, move out checklist. This is, you know, uh, definitely strong suggest. If this is more like protecting tenant. Moving checklist, tenant, you better fill out thoroughly. If you do not, then landlord assuming everything is perfect. When you move out, are using perfect condition to examine the whole house. <laughs> then tenant, you, have, you probably have more trouble 
<laughs> any crack, any uh, scratch, any uh, <clears throat> broken glass, it's all your fault. Well, I, when I move in, it's there. Show me. You didn't fill in the form. Okay? Some of a tenant, they're smart as a, I do have a photo. Okay, they show me the photos. Then photos, you know, usually may have a date, you know, when they took, took it, then you can see it. But I know the, uh, usually they are kinds of lazy to fill in the moving checklist. Yeah, no, no, no. When you move in, three days, usually three days. I usually give it a one week. You need to return it. Listing agent, no. no but some, some of them, you gotta have to examine it after you move in. I, I rather don't, I, I only got one piece. So that's why I say you fill it in when you move in after three days. Because if you fill in right now, yes, you could, unless you are thoroughly exempt everything. Okay, that's fine. But any something better than nothing. If they want to fill it in, don't stop them. Go ahead, turn it in. If tenant, they have their own agent, they want to do it right away, fine. When I hand over the key, go ahead. You know, have them, you know, I'll fill it in. <coughs> because if anything need to repair, then we can show the uh, uh, landlord. Oh, we gotta do this, we gotta do that. But after they move in, believe me, first month, uh -huh, it will most likely have more items. You need to, you know, uh, oh, the closet door is hard to uh, uh, close. Well, it's old, the wheel is worn out. I can I cannot do anything. Okay, so they accept it. Then it's hard to turn on the shower. Okay, those are we can repair, because those are, you can, you know, replace it or something. <clears throat> So some of them, it's pretty much give and take. You say, oh, okay. Some of them you can repair, some of them you cannot. Yeah. See, that's the issue. No, she said, everything, any more, it can be washed. Yes. Yes. Well, if you cannot, you, that's why, remember last time I told you how to, how to clean the mold? Oh, you may lie. Okay, yeah. <laughs> half bleach, half water. Well, if the, that's what before you, you, okay. When the rental property, before you turn into the next tenant, did you ever clean the whole house? No, no, you, okay. That's a, that's a problem. <clears throat> That's a problem. Okay. No, that's why we're signing the, the last, oh, you, you missed it. On the last training, we have the, the lease rental mode and ventilation agenda. Can they sign this one? I mean, they want to make sure everything is acceptable. Yeah, but if not, so that's your situation. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. First month, you got to have to clean it up. So I don't know why. That's why a lot of the uh, listing, I mean, the uh, owner, they try to save some money. Do not do that, please. Because you, as a listing agent, you tell them and say, later on, it's all your fault because tenant after you. If you have the receipts, even your cleaning made it, it issue the receipt, they can come back and clean it. Otherwise, you continue to do it for the lead tenant. You ask a, a landlord, how much did you work? $10 an hour or $200 an hour? Hey, right? You rather have less professional doing it. They can do faster, accurate, and Proper. You, you are not professional. Are you? Oh, you are the cleaning maid? Landlord, you think you save some money? You just drop your standard. <clears throat> you saw, okay, you saw, look, do you want to get a lawsuit or what? The more issue can be $1 million lawsuit, easy. Yeah.
你还是直接给你要你要 P R， 对，可是 as a listing agent， you gotta have to connect because when the tenant sue landlord， sue the listing agent too。所以当初来讲，我就不 take the listing. You don't follow my instruction. I don't take the listing. Why? I don't make much money. Why should I have to take the risk? So that's why a lot of uh, 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 agent doesn't want to deal with the uh, uh, listing. I mean the uh, uh, lease. Why? It's not a trouble. But if you know how to control, why it's like you know salary, income, coming in steady. <laughs> but if you don't know how to do it, it's a headache. Okay, it's a headache, a big headache. I I did turn down for if somebody pay me not pay me enough for the commission. I did turn down if the condition too bad uh, is really bad, and the uh, uh, seller, I mean the uh, landlord, the homeowner doesn't want to listen on my suggestion. Hey. Please let me go. I don't want to take your listing. I don't want to take your listing. I can foresee the trouble. I just don't want to take it. Yeah. Hmm. That's okay. I can. I. I will have more. I will have more. I don't mind to lose a bad client. I all I want to keep is only the client can work with me. So. You only have 24 hours. I only have 24 hours. I can only serve how many client, and that's why client have to work around my clock, not their clock. So that's the issue. Same thing. You gotta work on my guideline. If you if you don't do it, then I will not take your listing. <clears throat> Just like I would not show their property. If you, for example, if the some of a buyer, uh, their money says no problem. The money will be here. I want to see the money. You will see the money when I find the house. No, I will not show you the property if I don't see you the money, down payment. Now, why? You want to waste your time? Believe me, those clients, when you really want to, you know, oh, this this house, you know, we like it. Want to submit offer? Show me the bank statement. Suddenly, they vanish. Then you wasting how many how many time you showed in the property for nothing? Your your time is nothing. Not even a dollar. <laughs> a dollar. <laughs> you just waste it. So you gotta be careful for those buyer. They want to get the uh, the right from you or those uh, they are not ready buyer. Okay. Especially if somebody really want to look at feng shui, those uh, buyer, I put them aside. Tell me what the guideline is. Oh, my door cannot facing this way, that way, that. Way. Okay, fine. List it. So, to my service, I will look at the Google Map first, see where they're facing at. So I will eliminate those property. Then we we will not wasting time to show wasting your time and my time to see that property. Then you end up. Oh no, uh, this is not the right direction for me, right? I will tell them that. Okay, and I sometimes some of uh, the uh, uh, seller or the buyer said, if you don't listen to my suggestion, then you know, get away because it's wasting my time. That's okay. Why? Because I kept the reputation. That's how you keep the reputation. When the time is bad, will show you are different than other agent. So we only pick the one I want to work with. Not they pick up. Just like you know, it's a two way street. They interview me as to see if I can qualify to be their agent. So do I. I interview them see if they will qualify to be my client. Just like doctor, attorney, did they pre-qualify? Uh huh. You don't listen my order. You know on what I prepare. Then don't come to see me. If you see doctor, same thing. They they give you the prescription. You don't eat the medicine. Then don't see me next time, right? <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
you got to have to value yourself. You are the professional. Like real estate doctor, real estate attorney. We are the professional. Uh, please abandon those uh, Asian way. Asia, in Asia, our job is bottom of a barrel. Okay? <laughs> Nobody likes to do it. Okay? <laughs> but you know what? Who makes the most of the money? Same thing. Okay? We can make more money than doctor and attorney if you do it properly. Yes. How many hours, you know, co-worker, senior, you know, uh, an agent, they will make a million dollars, just commission alone. Mm -hmm. Their pocket over a million. How, how many? You can count. Not just one. Yeah. Over one million dollars. Boy, yeah. Corner say, boy, I pay you too much. Say, yeah, right. <laughs> so that's why I say if you can reach hundred thousand dollars your gross commission you're on the top 20 already that's it the other 80 percent then i even reach a hundred thousand dollars if you can reach hundred thousand dollars you'll be glad yourself you are get you are on the top 20. gross hundred thousand dollars gross i mean a total commission before you split with the, uh, the broker okay hundred thousand dollars income Okay, we're gonna, you know, do this. This one and a pool, hot tub, and spa attendant. For those house, even, what else? Townhouse, condo, did they have a pool? Yeah, or spa. You need, to, you need to have this, okay? That, because this is protecting landlord. Because we don't want any accident happen and they sue landlord. The following term and condition are hereby incorporated and made by the part of, okay, here's a residential lease, a month to month agreement. Usually that's why we sign this. On the purchase, we got careless. Why? It's because you own it, you see it. Doesn't, you know, it's your, your issue. Because lease, tenant and landlord, their binding agreement, they still continue. But when you purchase buyer and seller, and when the buyer becomes new owner, and that's it. They, they, the new buyer, they take their own risk, but not between landlord and tenant. So you fill out all the information, and one, swimming pool, hot tub, and spa, while providing uh, exercise, recreation, relaxing, also can be dangerous for people, as well as pets. Did you ever see dog, cat, drown? <laughs> I know I see a mouse drown in my pool. <laughs> my backyard pool, mouse. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but I see, you know, duck, you know, flight over to the pool. You know, they play. I think. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It can be uh, severely injured and drowned if the pool, hot tub, spa is not properly used. Tenants are strongly calculated that they, other occupant and tenants guests must adhere to the following safe practice. No diving into the pool or hot tub or spa. Not anymore. You see the older pool, they still have a diving board. But no, not in the new pool. If you build a, take the new pool, ain't got no diving board anymore because they don't dig it that deep, okay, for the diving board. And no intoxicated persons may use the pool and hot tub or spa. Why? It's because if, like, you having alcohol, well, can be, you know, intoxicated, <clears throat> and you may uh, drunk because you get drunk, and you get into water uh, and suffocate it. That's it. Or sometimes you get heart attack. Okay, when you get a hot tub. No one should use the pool or hot tub or spa alone. 
Well, I live alone. Well, I'm the homeowner. I'm okay. <laughs> but to tenant, no. Same thing, you know, when they go on the uh, uh, the uh, HOA, sometimes if they go on the uh, evening time or the or, HOA, they, they, they never have the uh, lifeguard over there. So they you're on your own risk. So that's why I already give you the warning. And if you still want to go alone, you're on your own risk. Children may never be left unattended when they may gain access to the pool, hot tub, and spot, not even for a few seconds. Few seconds. Because accident usually happen a few seconds. Yeah. A lot of parents, they regret just because of that. Neither the landlord or the landlord's agent can assure the safety of the person using the property uh, containing the pool, hot tub, or spa. As the uh, consequence, uh, tenant assume liability for pool, hot tub, and spa used by themselves, other occupants, their guests, and their pets. So that means the tenant assumes their liability, not landlord anymore. So you sign this form, tenant. That's a big difference. Two, if the rental is part of a rental complex, HOA, condo, townhouse, okay? The following also apply. The pool and hot tub spot may only be used during the posted hour. The HOA, they do post the hour where they can use and adult supervision is required for anyone under the age of 14. All drinks must be served, served in unbreakable containers. You cannot have a glass container on the public area. It will break the glass and everybody got to get barefoot. And especially, you know, you break the glass into the pool. That is the worst. Cannot see it. <sighs> no alcohol drinks are allowed in the pool area, hot tub, or spa. No excessive noise. Uh, please be considerate of your neighbors. User must show. Uh, user must shower prior to using the pool, hot tub, or spa. Okay. <laughs> well, well. Usually, you don't go down the the a gym, right? Uh, in the in the Asian area. <laughs> Did you, did you ever see anybody just take off the clothes and boom, jump to the, the tub, the hot tub? Well, that's why, you know, what the, uh, that's why, um, that's what I heard, put it this way. Those are people that work on the restaurant uh, from foreign country, okay? They don't really have a visa and they, they share the bedroom and they don't have a, a bathroom or shower. They can use, but you know the the, uh, the restaurant owner telling you join gym, right? <laughs> you go after, especially twenty four hours fitness, right? <laughs> you go after work, you still can take shower, and get the hot tub. Oh boy, yeah, disgusting, right? Okay, yeah, but but it, it's true, okay? You you go check it out. <laughs> I never, I never joined the gym, so <laughs> I don't know. But that's what I, well, when, when I look at it, you know, I say, Ugh. even you know, put it this way, you know, like you know, when I go to Korea, I go to the uh, the spa. Usually, I will probably go either early morning, so at the midnight, they will clean the whole thing. You go on the night time, evening time. I know they all clean. But I don't know, did they thoroughly, some people didn't really thoroughly clean. Uh, okay. Yeah, they didn't really, you know, wash up, you know, themselves. Boom! They jump in. So I don't think that the, the, the quality of the water will be as good as like when it's a morning and fresh, okay? <laughs> <clears throat> and user must, okay, and use the pool safety requirement, uh, equipment, only in case of emergency. Uh, HOA and uh, hours rule, if applicable, will supplement and supersede in this rule. If they have HOA, they have their own rule, you know, more tight and more strict than the, this form. Yeah. No lifeguard will be on duty. You are swim at your own risk. Full print. Okay. Four. Tenant agree to release, identify, hold harmless, and forever discharge landlord and landlord's employee. We. Agent, successor, and assigned 
from any of all claim liability, cause and action of any kind of a tenant, member of a tenant's household and tenant's guest and invitee uh, may have at any time against landlords and landlords agent resulting from tenants use the pool, hot tub and spa. So signing by signing this form, you're protecting us as a listing agent. So do tenant's agent and also the landlord. Believe me, tenant's agent will have him sign this because it's protecting tenant's agent too. They didn't say any agent. <laughs> agent with the S. <laughs> so this one, uh, it's a must. If you have anything deal with the pool, community pool too. Because as long as they can, uh, they can access to the pool and you need to let them sign this, put it this way. Okay, next one, uh, oh, pet addendum. If the uh, landlord do allow pet, then make sure you're signing this, pet addendum. Now with standard and other term of the agreement landlord here with uh, granted permission to the tenant to have a following pet or with the S only on the premises. Where's the blank stuff, what you filled in? What kinds of pets? Is it dog or cat or lizard or snake or whatever? If you want to list as a pet. And the size, how big, how many pounds? And what kind? Because sometimes you, what kinds of dog? Cat, we don't really have, we don't know much, you know, on the a breed of the cats, but dog. Yeah. You better, you know, list it, you know, what kinds of dog? Is a bulldog? Is a German shepherd? A husky or a chihuahua. <laughs> it's different. So you listed on the, the breed, the size, and the number. How many? One? It could be one dog, one cat, or whatever. So you list the number, the size of a pet, and also the breed of a, the animal. <clears throat> so that means next time, if you see more, wait a minute. You tell me it's one dog. How come we got three dogs here? That's okay. If if it's if it looks alike, okay, then then probably it's okay. That's a really good answer. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> okay. If it's their kids, okay, fine. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can see parents. I can see kids, right? Okay. But it's a different breed. Then we are in trouble. What, what happened? A chihuahua doesn't come up with German Shepherd. <laughs> so if a different breed, or you know. One time I got the uh, the tenant. Oh, my dog is thirty pounds. Oh, thirty pounds. Okay. What breed? Um, um, um. She she just doesn't want to answer. I said I want to know what breed. So when I by the time I say oh, I want to sign a lease, I need to fill in the form. What breed of your dog? Husky. B.S. Husky, thirty pounds. Did you ever see a husky on thirty pounds? <laughs> I said sorry. You're lying. You're lying. <laughs> huh? They ain't got no way the husky can be mixed. He's still got 30 pounds. Husky easily. 70, 70 pounds, 100 pounds. That's a huge dog. <laughs> and you know what? Husky usually, they really like to go out because they are the outdoor dog. Okay? They really like to run. And they will dig out through the fence and going out to play and come back. And you, what do you think your backyard is going to be? Yeah. So you got to do If the same size of a dog, like golden retriever, oh, they are more mellow. They're okay. So it depends. That's why we like to know what breed. Because the owner, if they do allow dog, that means they understand. And uh, we don't discriminate any dog as long as owner allow. And also make sure that dog has an insurance. Here, we'll continue. Uh, subject to the following terms and conditions. One, tenant is not allowed to have any other pets on the premises other than those designated above, including any pets they are just visiting. Oh, I'm sorry. The pets cannot be visiting, okay? The guests can be visiting, but not pets. Pets cannot just visiting. Why they say just visiting? Because they are lying. It's usually their friend. They want to save the money on the pet's hotel. 
and they put it on their house, stay for a couple of weeks since they, they go in a foreign country. Yeah. One time, you know, when I catch the plane, it's like, you know, one of a Chinese girl they, with the dog, I say, why are they coming out? Okay. And you only get boarding, you know, I'm not boarding though, well, you get, get to the uh, TSA, you know, for the uh, checking. Oh, I have a pass. Oh, okay, you come here. So you, they, they gotta have a separate, you know, area if they really want to bring the pets you know to a foreign country you got to have to go through all the uh, checkpoints the vets everything on that and make sure the pet is clean but same thing if you bring your dog coming back uh -huh, even more complicated depend on which country you go some of the dog just cannot get in after you bring it out yeah because they're just not allowed because the, if that country have something happen you know and they just will not allow any pets to get in. That means your dog, you have to say bye-bye, you know, once you bring it out. Yeah. <clears throat> because some of uh, uh, the uh, the pets owner, they treat them as a kid, so they would, you know, bring them everywhere to go. Even do on a vacation, yeah. Two, tenant represents uh, to landlord that is a pet is a house broken. There's no vicious, uh, no, uh, no, no vicious uh, tendency or history of threaten or causes harm or persons by biting, scratching, chewing, and otherwise. So that means um, we have no way to know the dog's behave. Okay. Yeah. See so if they have vaccine, you know, tendency, you know, on that. Three. The uh, tenant agreed that the pets will be properly licensed and uh, vaccinated, uh, pursuing the applicable law and tenant further agreed to provide proof of licensee and the vaccination upon landlord's or agent's request. So that means if the landlord requests, they want to see the pets. Did you, have, you ever see the uh, vets? Okay, I need the certificate. Did they periodically go to check, you know? And any any vaccination, okay? I need that. And license, that's important. I think you know the pets they probably usually put on the chips, is it in their body now? Yeah. I don't have any pets, so I don't really know much, but I mean I know it's licensing and vaccination required, you know, on the landlord. Four tenants responsible to compliance with all local law and regulation and related to the pets. Because why we mention that is, as long as pets signing this, that means they agree. Sometimes if the landlord did not check on it, if the tenants later on they have an issue, the pets, you know, fighting someone else and and they didn't have vaccination, I said, well, you're signing this for them, you should have it. Then that means uh, if the, uh, um, whoever got bit and suing the landlord. And landlord suing tenant you have to pay all the medical bills. Not me, landlord, okay? Because by the time when you sign this, that means you agree. Uh, five, tenants agree to clean up after their pets and proper, uh, properly dispose of all waste. No, backyard, no. Usually the uh, <laughs> garner, they hate to see those uh, a poop, you know, in the backyard. They just cannot clean it up. Some of the tenants just don't clean it up. Now, how do you have a gardener to clean the backyard? You know, more the lawn. Six, tenant agreed to keep the premises free from pet odor and stain. So if you have a carpet, easily have the, you know, the odor and stain. Seven, tenant agreed to take action to avoid pets infestation, uh, fleas uh, in the premises. Eight, if the premises are part of a residential complex, Pets are not allowed in pool area. Townhouse, condo, clubhouse, business office, laundry room, business center, or fitness center. Pets may not bath and groom in the laundry room, sinks, pool, and pool area. Because that's a public area. You know, some of a, a, a tenant, they are cheap. You know, they don't want to get dirty on their own home and just bring it, you know, for the public area. Yeah, to clean their pets. <laughs> Usually, like condo, I would, um, unless they bought it, 
the property, we cannot say anything. But if the, as a tenant, usually we kindly uh, avoid it, a big dog or any pets at all. Because I tell them, it's a condo, a townhouse, they may, because they, uh, with the attached wall, you, because of noise, okay? It may bother your neighbor, so they understand. Uh, nine, premises is to have a pet may be revoked at any time with three days notice for cost of month to month tenants uh, with a 30 day notice without cost. Tenant failure to remove the pets after premises has been revoked shall be deemed to breach of a lease and rental agreement. So when you move in, you tell the landlords, I don't have any pets, but later on the uh, landlord find out you have a pet, and then landlord reserve the right. If I serve you, okay, the uh, uh, revoke, either three days, a notice of a cost or notice correction. We do have the form. Then you have to get out. I'll give you the time, okay? You give away the dog or do whatever you want. That's your choice. But just you cannot have a dog. Either the pets move or you and pets all move. 30 days. So if the, right here, because you consider breach of contract. So here's you know the tenancy with the 30 day notice without cost. Mm -hmm. Because you consider breach of contract. Well, deposit game, okay, that doesn't matter. Just the breach of contract, I suppose. But if sometimes, you know, with the all the, all the argument, I'd rather, you know, return or deposit it. Get out. Huh? No. You cannot have the pets at all. If that's why it doesn't matter. You sign a lease, you tell me no pets. Half a year later, you 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 know you get the pets. That's a breach of contract. Well, you gotta ask the landlord first before you get the pets. If the landlord say no, then it's no. You better don't do it. Because if you uh, sneaky and just you know having a pet, and landlord has a right to inspect the property, right? Give you 24, 30, uh, 48 hours to notice. You think you can hide the pets? You know, when a landlord come, yeah, okay. Do you think landlord can smell it? Any unit with the pets, any property with the pets, you can smell it. Yeah. Especially pets have fur. You can see it. See, you know, the, 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 you know some of the uh, pets owner, you see their vehicle? bunch of furs, you know, from the carpet to the seat. Doesn't matter you have a leather seat, same thing, a fur. Uh, 10, uh, tenant is res responsible uh, for and will be charged for any damage to the premises caused by their pets, whether listed above or just visiting, damage including but are not limited to damage to floor, carpet, Drape, screen, landscaping, fencing, including odor due to the uh, presence of pets. So just in case, you know, the owner didn't call and they do have just visiting pets and they pee on the property, who got to pay? Do you think the tenant, they, they going to ask their guests to pay? No, they have to pay. Even their pets is trained, but the just visiting pet is not trained. <laughs> They have to, you know, because the odor is hard to get rid of it. Sometimes you're not just, you know, cleaning it up. You might have to replace the carpet and padding, both. 11, tenant agreed to identify and hold the landlord, landlord agent harmless from all liability claim demand and damage and cost for the injury to persons or property in condition with tenants, pets. So. I give you the warning so you cannot sue us, you know, landlord and so do the agent. Well, this is the most important. Tenant agreed to carry renter insurance would include coverage of pet ownership. I will check on that. I will tell the uh, uh, lab, you know, for the renter insurance, it gotta have to including the pets. If well, pets, whatever, you know, with a pet bite, then the renter insurance have to be covered. I gotta make sure you have this. If they have a dog. I don't know about cats, but the uh, 
I don't care. Just, you know, put it in any patch, <laughs> you know, and, they, and they ensure it's, I don't know, the cat will bite, you know, when the, <laughs> when the pedestrian cross over, but I know dog will bite. Or any other, you know, regulation, you know, are you feeling it right here? I'm 13. Uh -huh. Oh, ah, good question. Service dog. Service dog is not considered pet. This is what? Addendum. Pet addendum. Service dog is not pet. No. Service dog is not considered a pet, so not even considered a dog. It's a more like a human being. I don't know. <laughs> I never. I do. I do put a lot of service dog, but I. I will. Okay. Put it this way. If I know the. Uh, uh, that's a. It's a. It's a question. A lot of people didn't really quite know is, if the uh, the applicant they put it in, with the service dog. But your property is no pets. What do you? Do? Okay. What What do you do? Can you discriminate it? You can not, not you may not, you can not. You have to go through the regular, you know, screen, you know, for the tenant. Forget about that service dog because service dog require, you know, one of the, oh, you have a service dog, great. We can still accept it. Doesn't matter the, ten, the landlord say no pets, absolutely no. Well, this is a service dog. Or well, sometimes a service pet. Well, not, not uh, usually service dog. Not um, doesn't matter. It's a uh, 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 for the blind. Sometimes it's for the uh, uh, psychological comfort. Some of the small dog. So the service dog is not necessarily guide the blindness people. No, <laughs> not those service dog can be any kind of service dog. But we need a doctor's letter. No doctor approval. Don't say that's a service dog. We consider it as a pet. With the doctor's approval, okay, that's a service dog. And gonna make sure it's matching. Oh, service dog, Chihuahua. Hey, what dog you bring in? A bulldog? It's different than from a letter. <laughs> so you gotta make sure the letter will stay that what kinds of dog, okay? <laughs> they have their own. But we, but the, uh, uh, in, this one is not considered pets. But I would suggest, you know, verbally, I would tell them and say, you, when uh, in renter insurance, you better include your service dog. Yeah. Because I, if that's the case, I would not let them sign this. This is a pet addendum. And not only that, we cannot discriminate the people who have a service dog. Doesn't matter the landlord, you know, they, they, you know, they, they say no pets whatsoever. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, we cannot collect the security deposit either, the pet deposit. No, we cannot. You treat them as a human being on the service dog, okay? That's that's it, clear enough, okay? Treat them as a you know, human being. I don't know, can they get on a couple lane, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to fight to the court, okay? I don't know, okay? I'm not a law officer. <laughs> if you guys you don't know the answer, let me know. I, I always curious that. Can I put the service dog next to me and go to the carpool lane? <laughs> hey, they're my kids. So I don't know. I don't know about that that route. Oh, I know it's a real estate law. Okay, <laughs> maybe I'll, I'll I'll find out through Google search. Yeah, but it, but the service dogs is not considered pets. I don't know. Yeah, because I know last one time you know the uh, a person you know they fight to the court and they won. Yeah, the court overruled. So. Did you ever see that my pet is my kid? Uh. <laughs> so that means you still have to go to court to fight, I guess. And depend on the judge. Because every judge may rule differently. Okay. 
Okay, this is a form. It's not required by our company, but some of the company may require. And sometimes those are, this is a form you good to have to know is, you know, if they don't fill in TDS or SPQ, they're using this form to exempt seller disclosure. For like probate, if the, uh, for the attorney, they say, no, um, you could, you know, you exempt those forms, then we still, you know, and the, uh, perhaps you can send the, uh, the seller or if the, the uh, this form. To at least a one page form to, to fill in. So either seller or landlord, depending on which way you mark, okay? And make the following disclosure that regarding the real estate property, manufacturer home, describe, okay? And 2A, under California law, most seller and real estate contain a one to four residential units are required to provide a, a prospective buyer with the uh, comply with the real estate trend transfer disclosure statement. Certain sellers are exempt from completing the TDS, but not exempt from making other disclosure. Sellers who are not legally required to complete a TDS can use this form to make offer a required dis uh, disclosure, including the disclosure of material fact of which they are aware. So this one, it will substitute the TDS and SPQ, but it's not for every seller. So only for the probate or uh, sometimes living trust, but you gotta have a court order. Well, I'm not court attorney. Basically you follow the attorney instruction and the buyer, we cannot just keep on asking TDS. I want TDS, SPQ, our company need it. I don't care. <laughs> Attorneys say the uh, the seller they have exemption for that because they never lived there. Okay, so be smart. I say okay, then if that's the case, then please you know fill out this exempt seller disclosure. If they still ignore it, then better they writing an email or something. They still doesn't want to provide, so it's not the buyer's issue. Later on, anything happen, as the uh, a seller's issue because you don't you did not fill it out. Under civil code section and on or before January 1st, 2017, non-compliance plumbing fixture in any single family residence real property building before January 1st, 1994 shall be replaced by the property owner with the water conservation plumbing fixture. Because this is a one, you know, the only show on TDS, but uh, by law, we should all have it. Like after the property in 1994, we should have water conservation, plumbing, fixture. But the issue is nobody enforce it. <laughs> <laughs> then we don't know, is it really compliant? You know, sometimes the seller, they bought it after that. I said, well, we bought it the way that it is. We didn't really touch any plumbing. How do I know it's a water conservation or not? Unless you hire a third party to exempt, okay? We, usually the shower head, the latest, you know, what we have like faucet, we all have a, a nozzle, you know, on the front and kind of, you know, make the uh, waters, you know, flow smaller. And that's your know, water conservation. And sometimes to me, if I like to have a bigger, you know, uh, pressure, you know, on the shower or the faucet, I remove that <laughs> by myself. Hey, I'm a homeowner. <laughs> I don't plan to sell my house anyway. So it's okay. <laughs> if you really consider on that, okay, I put it back, you know, when I sell my property. Yeah. <clears throat> By the time I may replace the faucet already. <laughs> Number three, the following are a representation and made by the seller are not the representation of the agents. If any, this disclosure statement is not warrant of any kind of by the seller or any agent is not substitute for any inspection, warranties, and the principal may wish to obtain a real estate broker is qualified to advise a real estate transaction. If the seller or buyer desire legal advice, consult an attorney. If you have any issue. Why did you see all the gray starting on number four? Why? When you print it out, it's black. I mean, it's white. But when you see this, it's gray. It just, you cannot fill it in through DocuSign. You cannot fill it in, you know, 
on the PDF files on the computer for your client, seller, or landlord. They have to fill in by hand, do the check mark. Okay. This actually is a just like the first page of SPQ. Same question. Okay. So I'll go through very quickly. A. Within the last three years, the death of an occupant of a property up on the, uh, the property. Oh, yeah. Okay. Two, an order of the government health and official identify the property is being contaminated by the methamphetamine. If yes, attach the copy of the order. Three, the release of illegal controlled substance on or beneath of the uh, property. D, whether the property is located in adjacent of industrial use zone. In the general, a zone, a district allowing the manufacturing, commercial, or airport use. So if you are next to like warehouse, those kinds of stuff, it's considered, you know, next to the commercial zoning. Whether the property is affect, affecting the nuisance created uh, the industry use zone. And that's for the noise. F, whether the property is located within the one miles of former federal or state ordinance location. In general, an area wants to use a military training purpose that are contain a potential explosive uh, munition. So if any uh, base. <clears throat> but I mean the uh, uh, former federal and state ordinance location that can be also including like what? Jail. That's considered federal or state ordinance. If you say, if you sell the property next to uh, Chino, south side of Chino or Eastville, I would disclose it, depending on how far away from that the uh, jail. So that, that, that's why it's not just a military base. G, whether the property is con condominium is located on the planned unit development or other common su interest subdivision. So if the HO, if the with the HOA, usually you gotta have to see if the condo, condominium plan PUD or other common interest subdivision. Okay. So if you do have like a community pool, a community lake. Okay. And H insurance claim affecting the property within the past five years. Usually the uh, uh, anything. Uh, if the buyer, they can, you know, consult with the uh, insurance agent. So do the uh, uh, tenant when they buy the rental insurance. I, matter affecting the title of the property. J, material fact of a de uh, defect affecting the property not otherwise disclosed to the buyer. Any defect. Okay, plumbing fixture on the property that are non-compliance plumbing fixture as defined of a civil code section 1101.3. Right here, they all, you know, 1101.4, 1101.3. So if anything is not compliance, water conservation stuff. So most likely, oh no. But you better let the landlord or seller fill it in. No, they do that all, their own hand, their own check mark, not you. When you email it to them, a PDF file, it's, a, it's, a, it's gonna be, you know, it didn't gray out. They can still use a PDF file. You, they, they want to do their own DocuSign, fine. But not you set up, fill it in for them. And if anything you mark yes, then you need to explain right here on the bottom, okay? Seller represent that the information hereby true and corrected at the best seller's knowledge and the date signed it on the seller. Seller hereby authorized any agent representation, uh, representing and principal in this transaction to provide a copy of this uh, statement of any person or entity in the connection of the actual anticipated sales of the property. Because they all talk about selling right here. But actually, you know, this form can be used by landlord. Some of the company may use it, may ask. So you check mark right here. Landlord. What else here? All right, we'll go through the last four. Moving, move out inspection.
So this is a five pages form. You fill out the address and when is a moving date. Usually, you know, the contract, you will see the moving date. You fill it out here. And you fill in the uh, tenant's name. And here, the moving, you gotta have to explain to the tenant or if they don't know how to fill it out. And it's new, as a satisfaction or it's clean. O is others, okay. D, that's only when they move out. Deduct, uh, deposit deduction. So you, when the uh, when you fill out the, when they move out, then you already give the warning for the attendant. Oh, this part. When they move in, everything is fine. And now you are, you know, making a scratch. You break the glass. You crack the tiles, and gotta deduct uh, the from the deposit. So you put on D mark. So you can put all the check mark right here. So the front yard exterior, pretty straightforward, landscaping, fencing, sprinkler timer, walk, driveway, porch, stairs, mailbox, light fixture, and building exterior. Those are the items. Anything, if you have any common, you cannot, in the enough space, you can put on the bottom. They're each category, they have two lines on the bottom. Or it's not covered on this category, and you found out, you want to disclose, you put on the bottom. Entry, security screen door, door knobs or locks or flooring, baseboard, wall ceiling, light fixture, fans and switch outlets. Anything wrong with it? Or either new, either uh, satisfied, okay, or other. So you can make your comment. The more and detailed uh, listed is actually protecting on tenant. So this form actually protect tenant. Living room. Door, knob, and lock, flooring, baseboard, wall, ceiling, window, covering, window, locks, and screen, light feature, fan, switch, outlet, and fireplace equipment. If you have any fireplace equipment. See if, you know, make sure the, uh, the window covering or the blinds are working or not. Yeah, because sometimes the blind will get will deteriorating when they're getting old. You know what, the latest blind, did you ever see that? Uh, this time, you know, uh, when you do the rental, and I see, and I see the blinds. Hey, those are a mini blind. Okay. Where's the? I see the the the. You can turn, but how about the stream? <laughs> yeah, the new one is actually you lift it up, it stay. You pull it down, it stay. Oh, a whole lot better because the string will tangle. Every time I gotta have to untie um, this, you know, on the uh, the old string, and it's like, yeah, good thing I have a patient. A lot of us, ah, oh, I have no patient. Cool, down, I'll do it. <laughs> because when they're tangling, you know, with that, it's you know hard to uh, manage with that. And now, well, oh, good, I see something. This is a whole lot easier. <laughs> Lift it up, stay. Pull it down, stay. Okay, no more string, you know, on the pulled up. and Because usually pulled up, it can, because it's pretty long, it's easy to tie it up. And when they suddenly release it, it's hard because they have a mechanism and make, you know, you know, break on the top. Dining room, same thing, floor baseboard, wall ceiling, window covering, window locks and screen, light fixture, fans, or, you know, switch and outlet. Anything you have it right here, but usually if it's not applicable, I put it right here, NA. If I don't have any other room, sometimes you may have what, like a family room, you, you can list it right here, okay? Or bonus room or den, okay? Here in the bedroom, I will list it a, a master, okay? And also same feature, bedroom number one, bedroom number two, and sometimes bedroom number three. So you got four bedrooms. Well, how about if like five bedroom one? Oh, you put it on the, uh, yeah, continue. Here, you know, you don't have anything yet, but I mean, the same thing, bathroom. Master bath, bathroom one, bathroom two, about, 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 well, if you have bathroom two. So at least uh, in general, three baths, okay? So in the bathroom, you're looking at the door, knob, and lock. Flooring, baseball, wall ceiling, window covering, and window locks and screen. Some, some of the bedrooms just don't have the windows, so you skip that. Uh, light fixture, switch outlet, toilet, tub, shower, uh, shower door, rail, and curtain, sink, faucet, plumbing, drainage, exhaust fan. 
uh, towel rack, toilet paper holder, cabinets and counters. So anything wrong with that, you list it here. And all three bathroom, they all the same. Kitchen, flooring, baseball, wall ceiling, window covering, window locks and screen, light fixture, switch outlet, range fan and hood. Over or oven or microwave, refrigerator, dishwasher, sink disposal, faucet or plumbing, cabinet or counter. Anything wrong with it? List it. Hall and stairs, flooring, baseboard, wall, ceiling, light fixture, switching outlet and closet, cabinet and rail, railing and <coughs> banister. You know the banister. That's for that. Okay, the stair. That's called a baluster, okay? The railing, that's on the top. Each one with the uh, the wood one, that's called a banister. Laundry, faucet, valve, plumbing, drain, cabinets, counter. So anything on the laundry, especially with a vacant property. Last time I have the, uh, they cannot tie up the faucet. Oh. So when I, when I, uh, after a day, oh boy, laundry room is all with the water. And I see that it drip very slowly. But when you tie it up, you know, with the washer, I got no problem. If the landlord doesn't want to fix it, what do you do? Huh? Oh. Well, you can actually buy the cap. You go to Home Depot, you can use a plastic cap, cap it up. That's fine. Okay. Sometimes I just have to be creative and sort of clean it up, cap it. And I tell the tenant, I say, they were dripping very slow, but when you tie it up with the washer, the hose, they have no problem. Okay. But if it's still continue to leak, please let us know. Yeah, you're going to have to replace a rubber washer on that. You know, sometimes you may have to replace a whole a faucet if it's getting too old. But just tell you, Home Depot sell a lot of things. If you have, you know, that's why I love to go to the Home Depot and see anything. But you know, it's sometimes like you just like went over there and say, oh, one day around. Oh, the BD40 is on sale. Okay, grab the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, pest, uh, uh, insect repel, you know, for the, those uh, uh, pest killer. Oh, okay. It's on sale. Okay, grab a gallon. <laughs> you you go out spending money, but eventually you're gonna use it anyway. <laughs> you you just see you know what is on sale, and I see that oh golf umbrella, how much? And I tell the uh, uh I said, where's the where's the sign? I said, and I said, then I go to ask. I said, do you know how much? You know that four ninety nine. Oh, they're cheap. Usually the golf umbrella is like thirty forty bucks. You only sell how much? Four ninety nine. Boy, very tempting. It's not, I don't have it. I have one and I, I gotta have to measure and see mine is big enough. I wanna really wanna get a bigger one, you know? So I say, okay, we'll see. So it's kind of fun, you know? Maybe for the men's store. Women, they probably go to a different. <laughs> men's store is like, oh, uh, the tools on sale. I got out of tools at home already. <laughs> I usually, oh, I, I'm still missing this. You buy more <laughs> on the tools. <laughs> But when I'm when I'm gonna fix it? Well, you actually I fix it for the clients. Okay, that's why you know they. My clients say you are very handy. Yeah, because I learn from the handyman. <laughs> Every time they go, you know, I kind of watch them how they do it, and I I I, I got a lot of tool too. Oh, this is a tool you use. Okay, next time remember. <laughs> Okay, so if the system basically this one to talk about the AC, air conditioning, furnace, thermos, uh, thermostat, uh, water heater, water softener, if you have it listed, or anything other if you're not covered on this form. Garage parking, garage door, other door. What do you mean the other door? The garage have a side door. Okay. Driver floor, cabinet, counter, light fixture, switch, outlet. Electrical uh, exposed wire, windows, and other storage shelves. Backyard and side or side yard, okay? Because we have a front yard already, so this is a back. Patio deck and balcony or patio cover and landscape sprinkler or timer. 
uh, pool heater equipment or spot cover equipment, fencing gates. Safety security. So smoke detector, carbon monoxide detector. See, they have to inspect it. See if you have it or if you miss anything, you get a list it right here as a tenant. Okay. Security system or security window bar. Okay. Security window bar. If you did not see the release in the bedroom, you better tell a landlord to install it, the mechanism, because when the fire break out, you just lock yourself inside. You cannot get out. Because for example, usually the fire may starting maybe kitchen or the living room or some other area, then you want to get out from through the window. So what you knock you you break the glass, you still have a you know <laughs> yeah, security window bar. And if you don't have a re proper release, eventually that's illegal. That's only in the sleeping bedroom. They don't require a release on the living room or office or anything. But sleeping, every sleeping room, you gotta have a release so you can get out. Any personal property you live there, then you list it. Or keys, remote device. So if you have any, you know, for how many remotes and see all the keys here, when you attach, Supplement. So if the, uh, the landlord have any more stuff, then tenant sign, landlord sign, you only sign on the top. The bottom is when they move out. So when they move out, you bring out the same form. Well, at least you gotta have copy. Usually that's why we keep it through our, you know, um, the office, you know, for the document in, in store in the cloud. So you print it out again. Okay, I printed out a copy again. Then, uh, you know, when they do the move out checklist, you go through everything. Then, when they move out, they sign it and make sure they have a forwarding address. Why do they need a forwarding address? You ask the tenant, do you want your deposit back or not? <laughs> you want your deposit? Then fill it out. Then I'll mail it to you. I will not give you the deposit on the spot when you turn in the key. That's a forwarding address here. and the, uh, uh, then the owner side. Okay. So that's pretty much everything here for all the uh, lease form. I'm gonna cover everything here. Okay, any question? No, okay. I know 10 minutes to 12, we'll just take off, you know, I'll cut the class, you know, training short. Um, Thursday, we're starting on the MLS, Multiple Listing Service, all the uh, the uh, computer. So if you want to bring your own laptop, feel free to do so, or iPad, okay? Then, then I will go through, you know, step by step, you know, everything on the MLS training on that, okay? But first of all, you gotta have to join the board first. Have, <laughs> If you did not join the board, you don't have access. Oh, the can I'm going to join the board. Okay. You're going to have to get access. Otherwise, you know, you can only watch. You cannot play. You know, play alone.